Okay, today's daily rehab is to help you with Nordic hamstring curls, and especially for those of you who are struggling with the downward phase, getting down, and also to help you with a few setups. But this is also really, really good for people with hamstring injuries for that later stage and return to sports stage, because Nordic curls are excellent for hamstring strength, very specific for sport, and uh, it's ones we try and get people doing once they're sort of at their end stage rehab. Now what you're gonna need is a bit of a setup. At home, of course, you can get people to hold your feet or you can put your feet under something. Today, and if you're in the gym, what you can do is get the barbell down to a height about this high, okay? So you can get your feet under. Now, we've just got some adjustable, obviously, hooks here so we can get it low. A little tip though, don't just have the barbell there, have some weights on it. Now I've only got 15 kilos on each side, but that's enough to keep it down, and counteract my body weight. So little safety tip there is make sure you have some weight on the bar. Don't just have the bar rolling around, have it racked and have the weight on it. Worst case scenario, you have very heavy bar, but on this side, because obviously if it's on this side, it's gonna roll and move. When it's on this side, it's not gonna do that so much. So have it on the other side of the rig. Second thing to protect your Achilles and your calf, you'll need a mat or some sort of bar wrap around that to try and protect the pressure on the back of your legs. Third thing is if you can get yourself a couple of power bands, that's my little trick to help you going forward. But let's just have a look at the setup first. If you don't, or you, you're not so worried about dropping down, you can do that. I'm gonna give you some tips about position and then we're gonna go through how to do it if you're struggling with the downward phase. So when you set yourself up into here, with this, what I do is I put this, you know, you might have something different, a pillow or something like that, mat around that way, and then just get your feet in sort of sideways like that. So you are then set up, you can put your feet in a dorsiflexion into there and you're locked in, and that's really good. Now, the first thing what I would do is when you're working on form is get a bench in front of you so you're not going down as far. You don't have to worry about fatiguing at the bottom or trying to push off and lose your form. You can just focus on the form first, worry about the depth later. So when you sit up, first thing you gotta think about is don't have your back in extension. We don't want you jacked up into extension when you come forward, okay? Because then you're gonna lose some of this hamstring work and you're gonna lose some of the glute work here. So what you need to work on is before you even go, before you even load, you tilt backwards here. So you're trying to be from an extended position to a neutral upright position. And you'll notice when you do that, okay, it's like correcting a pelvic tilt if you like, your core turns on a bit more, your glutes are on because they're trying to pull you back in that position and your hamstrings are already sort of pre-firing. So that position is really nice to start with. You've got to try and maintain that position as you go forward and not lose it and go to extension. So that's a big one you've got to focus on. And that's why you, might, you may need the bench or the bands to help you sort of work on that form rather than just how many reps you do. So when you go forward with your toes, you'll naturally kick in, but once you dorsiflex your toes, okay, so you lock your back of your calves into the bar, you're tilted here, and then you try and maintain that position and get your hands ready. So when you tilt forward, it's at the knees, it's not at the hips. So you come forward to there and then push away. Now you're trying to not push away with your hands, you're trying to do it with your hamstrings. So only do enough here and then enough push away that your hamstrings are doing most of the work. And the whole thing is to try and, if you look at my back here, to not go and arch or lose it there, okay? So when you come down, you don't want to sort of lose it and then push back in an arch position because you're not going to get that hamstring drive there. Okay, so that's your first tip. And trying to use that bench there, it doesn't matter how far high it is, it depends on how, you know, how much strength you've got here, that will be my first thing. But if you've got something high like this, you can then add on bands, and this is going to give you a way better fatigue issue correction, if you like, because this will really give you some assistance in doing that. Now, you won't need the bench as much for this one because your safety net now is going to be these. Now, what I'm using is two sort of inch wide power bands because it's this high um, and going through here like this. So, one wraps around and then you're just going to have to pull that through until it's locked in. 
and there's my safety net. So what I mean by that is, if I go back and under through here, get my feet back in, lock them in that position there, get that all nice and snug. Now this goes around your upper body. So now what I've got is my safety net and I can then work on form here. I can go as fast sort of forward as I want and come back. I can work on different ranges. I don't have to worry too much about my hands at this point. So as I get lower in this position here, my hamstrings are getting weaker at this point because they're lengthening. I've got more resistance on the band and I can come down here when there's hardly anything and then I can come back up and then use my hamstrings. Now, I can get, if you really focus on that, I can get a really good activation and strengthening through the hamstrings without having to do this sort of power, power pushback, if you like. I can really slow it down. Now that's really good for eccentric training. So for this one, and you might find you might just do this anyway, even if you can do a full Nordic, start with this and then correct your form and you spend more time under tension here so you can slow yourself down to this point here and then at the same time slow yourself and really pull yourself back and keep your form which is the key because otherwise sometimes people get to here and they push back and they that part of the movement there they're not learning any training really. they're just learning the eccentric part they're not learning the concentric part so this will be really good to help you if you're sort of a little bit weak but you want to do the Nordics to get that form correction, come forward, get that security and then really work on pull, 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 pull backwards which gives you that strengthening. So that would be the setup I would use, inch wide power bands. Obviously if it's a little bit low you can maybe only use one pound power band. If it's a little bit high you might have to actually make this into two as in, sorry, lengthen it. Um, to make that a little bit longer, but you just got to work out what length suits you. So some of you might be thinking, how do I do Nordics one-legged or at least trying to get some sort of bias to one leg? Now this is really, really good for someone who say has had a hamstring graft for an ACL where they've got a like proper deficit in their hamstring and they need to work on a single leg and they want to get up to that Nordic type strengthening, but they want to bias one leg. Well, this is how you do it. Grab that band now, single band this time, so it's got more tension. Get that in. It's a little bit more you know, harsher on under your arms, but you get way more load. You can see I can just hold myself there, okay? So this, because you've got so much tension there, then when you switch to one leg, because the load's more, you've got more here, it all balances out. So what I suggest you do, so say I'm going to work on my left leg, my right one, I just point my toe. So under there, just point my toe, so it's sort of like that. So it's off this. So my left one's on that. I'll just put the pad in there. My left one's on, so I'm holding here, but my right one, I can't because I haven't held it. Then what I do, set myself up again, get that pelvic tilt going, so my back is in neutral, my glutes are on, my core's on here, and then low down, and you'll find that that left leg does all the work and then you can come up and then pull with that left leg. And it's not as hard as you think because you've got heaps of load here. So when you get used to this, you don't go to just single leg and going down. You still need the resistance, but at least I'm working my left leg, not my right leg. And then as I get better, just make this band skinnier or longer, and that'll give you less um, help, and therefore there's more load here, and you can graduate that as you go to get enough strengthening as you need. Check that one out. See you next time.